My name is Mark Scripjack. Um, I'm Director of Operations at Atlantic Self Storage, and I've been in the industry now, uh, self storage industry, for the uh, best part of 18 years, 19 years. Um, I started originally back in 2003 uh, with the largest um, self storage REIT, which was Big Yellow Self Storage, um, based out of London. I think they had 76 locations, and I, I started as a sales associate on the front desk. Um, went through all the training and uh, just before I moved over here, I'd, I'd reached to a, a multi-site manager of four to five stores, um, was heavily involved in the training and with the company. And then I came over to uh, sunny Florida and uh, I took over 44 locations um, with Atlantic Cell Storage. And we're now up to 50 with our 51st opening um, in February, hopefully. So some exciting times for us. Obviously, navigating uh, this worldwide pandemic has been a little bit interesting and a, a little bit different. But for the most part, I think the self-storage industry has uh, performed very, very well. And, and hopefully a lot of you listening in are sitting there with, hey, yep, we've got really record high occupancy. And that's great. So I'm here not to put a dampener on it, but maybe just to, to explain why maybe 100% occupancy is not always ideal. Um, there are some certainly over my time some common misconceptions about or misconceptions about the 100% uh, occupancy. Typically, to me, um, and my training that I've had is you're leaving money at the table. You, you've undervalued your product, so to speak. Um, you know, people think, "Hey, I've, I've got reached the top. I can't do anything more." Um, that's not the truth. Um, it's easy to stay full, and I'm going to do a case study, a very short one, just to explain the story of one of our stores. And it's not the case. What move in will, what moves in typically will move out eventually. And you know, you really don't want mission accomplished. You don't want your staff to be complacent and get into the habit of turning business away. That, that's never a good thing. Um, you want them to stay sharp, engaged, and hungry for the sale, which is really important. Just bear me one second. So when we say you're losing revenue, typically it's because if you're 100% full, all of your customers should be paying a lot more money. Now, if you, if you look at most stores, you'll have 10% of people paying a street rate or a, a rate at $75, $99, paying $8 more. There's different prices for everyone. You know, when, when we look at that, if you're 100% full, you want to make sure everyone is paying pretty much the same rate going forward to make sure it's more consistent. And you certainly, if any unit becomes available, you want to make sure you're charging that at a higher rate. That street rate is actually increasing and you're, you're getting more bang for your buck. Uh, we're all living in a, a very strange world at the moment. Many of us working from home uh, more remotely or not doing a normal thing. But the online presence is absolutely essential now. You, you, we have to be able to do business online. If you don't have units available, no one can shop for you on, on the internet. No one can use a smartphone. So if you do get 100% full, you have no way to really dangle a carrot or hook anyone in new to come because you're already full. Um, and then you're going to become out of date. Your search, you're not going to appear as high in the search, um, in the SEO ratings, because there's nothing relevant that the consumer wants. Um, you don't have availability for your customers, so they're going to have to go somewhere else, um, which you never want to do because it's not like a, hey, I need storage. You don't have it. Oh, I'll wait a few weeks. If, if you need storage, you tend to have a demand, a need. You need it pretty quick. So you need to have that space available there as and when the customer needs it. Um, without new rentals, you're not getting any of the, the small add-ons. Add now, add-ons are not as important as storage revenue. We all know that, but it is good getting a constant source of admin fees retail sales, um, protection plans or um, tenant insurance, selling for unique services that you do have, and new customers coming in tend to take all those. You know, it keeps that revenue coming in, which is, is useful to have. Um, you can obviously get a negative brand awareness in your local marketplace, and I'll come on to that in a second. And you are, I mean, what, also you are opening the door if you're maintaining a high occupancy all the time that someone, a larger operator may come in and actually say, do you know what? They've been full for the last two years. Let's open a four or five story building next to them and put them out of business. And that's something, you know, you need to be wary of. You want to make sure you know what's going on in your marketplace, but that is a potential and that could uh, cost you a lot more revenue in the future. 
Now we have a, a store called OSA 295, Old St. Augustine 295. Um, great, great location, high visibility off a highway, um, about five, 550 units, um, mixture of drive up and climate control. Um, Back in 2014, it reached a summit of 100% full, which um, sneaked up on us. It wasn't actually one I was directly managing, but the issue we had is everyone was really excited, but it turned out it was really detrimental for the store over the next nine months to a year and a half, basically. Um, what moves in will move out. So unfortunately, they went through a sustained period of three, four months where people were inquiring, saying, hey, have you got a space? No, we don't. Pass them on to a sister store. And foolishly, we were telling people, well, this is what our rate would be if you came and moved here. So then we were past giving out our rates, which are high, because you'd expect us to be high because we're highly occupied. But we're passing it off to sister locations that had the availability. And so then word of mouth takes effect. Hey, don't bother going to that storage company. They're full and they're expensive. We found it one two and a half miles away, a little bit cheaper. So we hurt our reputation in that small five mile radius because people got used to over three, four, five months of saying, oh, that store's full. They don't have it available. We'll go somewhere else. Um, and then eventually that caught itself up. You know, eventually the inquiry started drying up. Occupancy began to fail. I think we got into like the low 80s at one stage. And it took us some time to really get back in the market and make sure people knew we had something available there. So I don't want to scare people. If your store's full, that's great. But there are some warnings to be to learn from. And, you, you know, for me, you are leaving some money there at the table that should be yours, really. Um, so typically, it's always best to have some type of idea that will or strategies in place that will help you balance revenue growth and occupancy growth to get the best of both. Um, if you're going to do well in a market, you always want to have some availability of, of products. You don't want 25 5 by 10s and two 10 by 10s but you want to have some availability of each size so you can cater for the inquiry coming in um staff development a simple way to maximize revenue is to invest your time in your staff um we try and do a lot of training and one-to-one -one coaching with our staff and we do a simple selling technique where hey we advertise a price online it's 99 dollars for a 10 by 10. the staff will show that 10 by 10 but typically it's at the top of the building in a long elevator ride and you walk five corridors back half an acre down to the left and it's the unit in the back corner with a load of bar, you know, posts in the way and people are like oh well, this is the right size but have you got anything without a little bit closer to the elevator or any you're like absolutely we do but it's 119 dollars if you want to have the one right by the elevator because it's more convenient because we know that people will always pay for convenience so, you know, we try and work with our staff to make them feel comfortable showing an advertised price, but we're making sure they're showing us something that, hey, if they do take it, that's great because it's a bit of a pain unit to get to. And then you can make sure you have better pricing available for your, your, your high retail item, which is your prime location at your facility. Um, regular rate increases. Um, the REITs, CubeSmart, public storage, live storage, do them typically twice a year. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it twice a year, but you have to do it at least once a year. And it shouldn't be a three, four dollar increment. It should be a, a decent rate increase. Um, for my experience of the 18 years, when you nickel and dime people, um, it tends to rub them the wrong way more than an actual larger rate increase. Uh, the advantage, if you start with a larger rate increase, you can always meet them halfway as well. So, hey, yeah, we're going to give you a 15 dollar increase, but we want to keep your business. So how about we make it eight dollars and. Both of you are happy. So you do have a bit of negotiation room if you give a, a slightly larger rate increase. Um, we're very fortunate where we've expanded five or six of our stores over the past uh, five, six years where we've got occupancy. We know demand's coming in. We know apartments are being built. So if there's ever an opportunity to expand on your facility, you know, you know what's going on in your market. You know what uh, is a popular size. If you have that opportunity to expand, do it because it will stop someone else potentially coming in. Um, as an operations manager, I'm, I do not like discounts. It's, I don't like seeing it because we're giving money away needlessly. Um, I understand people, you need to have a hook. There's normally some type of opening promotion and that's absolutely fine. You pay me two months, I'll give you a month free when you move in, absolutely fine. But the <clears throat> some perpetual discounts that kill you over time, 10% over 
a three and a half year stay for a customer, that's you've drained a lot of money. I'd rather give them a month free at the beginning and then got the full whack later on. So we typically set up discounts to be reviewed every six months. Um, they actually expire. And then if the customer ever reaches out, we train our staff to say, okay, you had a 10% discount. That discount's now stopped. It's expired. But what I can offer you is uh, we do have a 5% discount we put on. So we try and shrink our discounts over time, <clears throat> over the length of stay. And again, further, if there's a real problematic customer or someone that, oh, I can't afford to lose this one, you can put it back in. But we make sure our discounts expire. And then I want to talk about stadium pricing. And this can be done at any time. It's easier when you open a store, but you can certainly implement it even at 80% occupied, 90% occupancy. And that's the same way as when you go to a concert to watch a music show or you go watch a live sporting event. You're going to pay extra money to sit on the ground, you know, on the, on the prime spots, in the prime seats. You pay more money. I can pay $20 and go in a nosebleed in the 400 section watching a Jags game, which is quite depressing to watch at the moment, or you can pay $250 to be in the lower bowl and actually get a great view of the game, soak up the atmosphere a little bit better. So it's the same way for storage. Our primary or prime real, our prime real estate is the ground floor. Um, so if you have a multi-story facility, three, four stories high, your first floor should be more expensive than your second, third, or fourth. But with stadium pricing, you can still do it on your second and third floor. Units close to the elevators in the first two corridors should be priced more than what the units five or six corridors back are. So think of it the same way when you go to a, a, a live event, you pay, you know, people pay for first class flights all the time. They want a bit more leg room. Not everyone does, but some people will pay for convenience and that's well worth remembering. And then dem demand pricing, which I can discuss now very briefly is based on availability. If you had 10 units available of a 10 by 10, your price is 100. If you go to six units, that price is 129. But if you went to 15 units, you may go to 89 to create demand for it. So depending on your availability, the demand for the size of the unit, you can price it accordingly and you can use your operating software to do that. Or you can do it manually um, by just keeping a tally of your available units um, every day. I like an occupancy. I mean, there's no set formula, but 93 to 95 percent to me is ideal when I look at my 50 locations. Um, I've got some availability to rent, um, but I know at this stage we can be aggressive with rate increases. We can grow the revenue. Um, we can target some problematic customers and move people along. So securing your occupancy, demand pricing, you want to get used to having Having your staff know that, hey, I've only, I'm down to my last three. My price is now going up more because there's higher demand for it, whereas I've got 15 of that size. I actually can make it more appealing and more attractive to get people in by lowering the rates. You need to obviously check your competitor analysis. They don't, the competitor never rules what your pricing does because you have your own product, your own service, your own staff, stuff that makes you unique about your own company. But you need to know what your competition is doing because you want to make sure they're not charging more and getting getting more bang for the buck than you are. Regular rate increases do need to occur, um, a minimum of once a year. Um, most companies can get away with two or review every six months per account. Um, we always always go aggressive on updating rental agreements. So if we've got a, a, if we update anything and we know our occupancy is high, we try and do that at the, at the height of the busy season simply because we want everyone to be on the update uh, rental agreement and some people never want to sign the rental agreement. Um, no matter, so you can simply give them 30 days notice that, hey, we're, we're exercising our right to uh, give you notice to leave or you can come in and sign our new lease. It's entirely up to you. And like I say, we always look at target, my district managers when they go visit their stores, if the stores in that 89, 90, 92, 93% range, they shouldn't have problematic customers. We should be able to manage those at the business to stop us going gray, <laughs> stop causing a stress. The same person who late waits the day before auction to pay, we don't need them anymore when you're 92, 93% full. This is not worth the stress. Um, yeah, we should be smarter with our time. The managers, our frontline staff have got plenty to be doing rather than wasting a lot of energy on, on those problematic customers. So there's my information, our information, I'm so sorry. Um, if anyone has any questions,
please feel free to uh, drop me an email. Um, it might take me a day or two to respond, but I promise you I will respond. Um, thank you for listening. If you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to put them into the chat feature. Um, and I can go ahead and try and answer those. But I think probably the uh, round table is about to end any minute. Uh, thank you for uh, logging in and watching. And I hope to see you in, in the real flesh soon when this uh, pandemic is hopefully over.